This has been a program of research that we've done over a number of years, the main aim of which is to try and understand why people with Down syndrome have such a high risk for Alzheimer's disease towards the end of their, their lives. Okay, get in, um, get stress. Stress. Yeah, Daryl's yeah, got a lot, uh, a lot of stress over his wife's condition because sometimes she doesn't even recognise him when we visit. So it is very stressful for well, the whole family, in fact. This research would not be possible without the support of families and also people who are paid to support people with Down syndrome. They've often spent time encouraging, talking to people with Down syndrome about the research and they will support them traveling here and traveling back afterwards. And what has been really nice is when you talk to people with Down syndrome after they've had the scans, some of them will say to you, well, I was a little nervous about it, but I'm so proud that I've done it. I enjoyed taking part in that study and, well, I'd happily take part in any future studies. <laughs> What everyone observed is that the rates of dementia in people with Down syndrome seem to be brought forward by perhaps 30 or 40 years compared to what you observe in the general population in people who do not have Down syndrome. And there was an important discovery in 1986 when the gene for something called the amyloid precursor protein was located on chromosome 21. Now it's chromosome 21 that people with Down syndrome have in triplicate rather than in the normal duplicate. So therefore they had three copies of this amyloid precursor protein, an extra copy. And amyloid is the protein that is deposited in the plaques and elsewhere in the brain in people who have Alzheimer's disease. So this was a very important observation. So they should find out more about Alzheimer's, that we can get earlier, of course. About Alzheimer's? Yeah. yeah. So you like finding out about that? Yes. Okay, very good. If we can demonstrate that amyloid is the protein that is driving this problem, excess amyloid is causing Alzheimer's disease, then there are drugs and treatments being developed that lower amyloid and therefore might be used to prevent dementia, particularly in people with Down syndrome. And these new studies have involved the use of brain imaging, uh, they've included also studies looking at uh, what we call mitochondrial function, looking at the eyes, and a number of other things, all of which is to try and understand why they get it and how we can best uh, diagnose it and ultimately how we might be able to prevent it. People with Down syndrome are willing to take part and I have to say I think they've been absolutely remarkable in lying still, having these scans, doing the numerous tests that we ask them to do. And that's been really, really important because if we didn't have people with Down syndrome who are willing to do these tests, then you couldn't do the research. My own view is that people with Down syndrome are the group that may benefit most from new treatments in that we know that this is a group of people who have a very high risk of developing dementia. And interestingly, it's likely that the cause of dementia in someone with Down syndrome will be the same across all people with Down syndrome. So if you can demonstrate a treatment that works in one person or a few people with Down syndrome, it's likely to work in all of them. You can't make that case in the general population because risks for Alzheimer's disease may vary. So I think there's a very positive note that research is being done, we're getting closer to understanding what the problem is, and the pharmaceutical industry is very interested, obviously, in an answer to how can you treat Alzheimer's disease. So I think as long as we can keep uh, Down syndrome right at the centre of this research, then in the longer run, one would hope that there are really good treatments that would prevent it developing.